I would sub. So now we will display the data in a simple way and display some loading spinner and uh, yeah, that's it. So first thing, I will import the use selector from the React Redux like this, and I will import two components from React Suit. The first one is the placeholder. The second one is the message, and I will import the HTTP status enum we created, and yeah, and I will start to work. So first thing, I will select the loading uh, from our slice. So use selector, and I will create a selector for that. So I will put them inside a file called selectors. So export const select loading status, and that will be So let me just uh, just to, so I could, don't write anything wrong. It will be something like that. So I'm cheating. I'm looking at the code in another screen. So let me just explain it. So this will be the state. So state, and if you think about it, uh, state. This is this our state. Now go go to dashboard. This now go to loading. This key. And this actually will work because you will put this function, which is this, here. So it's the same thing, but in case if you are using this multiple places, you will put it inside a separate folder and just import it here. So, but you can make it simpler or shorter by destructing like this. And let's go and import that. And let's just put it here. And what I will do, I will have floating equal to HTTP status to pending. You can do this. So display a specific component, else nothing. So specific component or else nothing. Uh, but what I will do, I will have and and because this will always retain a boolean. So if this is true, display placeholder dot paragraph from React Suite, and I will give it some props. So style will be margin top 30, pros will be equal to five, and active like this. Okay. Now if loading is equal to HTTP status to rejected, I'll display this message component. I'll give it show icon closable type error title also error now description. This will be in another video, so I'll put it to do display error message from the REST API. So if, the, if we received an error from Axios, from the API, we'll display it here at some point. I'll show you how we can do that. And the third thing, now if loading is equal to HTTP status dot fulfilled, I'll display a message. So I will have some props, show icon, closable. This is actually a shorter syntax for this. It depends on how you build your library, but it works here. So type equal success and title be equal success. And description will be equal to fetch data correctly. And for displaying the data, I will create another component called dashboard cards here. And let's just make it really quick. So I'll import a couple of things. One thing is the use selector from the React Redux, and from React Suite, I'll import the panel, row, and column. First thing, I will use the use selector to select the data. As you can see, I'm going to the state and dashboard the data. Then I will have a row. 
So I'll retain a row. So data dot map. So I'll just copy paste some stuff. I don't think you care about these. You can actually ignore this part. So our dashboard data cont each object contains an ID type, latitude, longitude, latitude, and suffix. I'll just display them. So let's go to our dashboard and import that component. And we need to display it here. There is if, if you add it here like this, it will break because you need a root component that combines all of these. There is a really nice thing. You can put this syntax. And this is a shorter syntax for reactor to fragment. I'll now close it here. But if you do this, this is a shorter syntax. And uh, that's it. So let's go and see. So let's go track it from the beginning. Let's go to our users. Or yeah, let's just refresh, hit dashboard. You see this loading and now it's success. You have it. You can click X and this will remove. These are all our data. But there is something that I want to test. I need to see like the loading spinners and all of that. So we can actually add delay to the Polux API. So npm run dev. Now, if you add two dashes and start passing flags, these will be passed to the run script. But if you want, to, want them to be passed to the dev script, which points to the JSON server CLI, you will pass two dashes. Again, now delay be equal to four seconds so let's go hit refresh so let me, and network so go to dashboard as you can see it will it should take some time Maybe I wrote it. Yeah, it's, it's like this. Yeah, should not have a space here. So delay for a second each request. So let's click on dashboard. You'll see this will be very slow. So this is the loading spinner. As you can see, now we will have it. So it's success. So let's see on error. And yeah, I just stopped the API. So let's go to users, hit dashboard. You'll see we have an error message. So what I am planning here to display the error message that returns from the API that maybe the API is uh, failing and stuff like that. And when you hit X, I will refetch the data again, try to fetch it again. We will do that. I think that's a realistic example. So yeah, I think from now on, it will be a little bit uh, familiar or it will be a little bit similar to what we already did. But we will start to explore again when we prevent some of these steps as well, which will be very fast. Then we will see all of these uh, extra things like canceling and uh, let me just do, and all of these are like uh, stuff in the canceling. I think these are very interesting and handling errors, of course, and looking at extra things from the API. There's a lot of things to cover. We just started. Yeah, I hope this was useful and bye.